this is a new little series I'm going to start doing. I've been wanting to do it for a while. I'm going to be calling it Game in Minutes. And it's uh, we're going to be using uh, Pi Game or Blender or maybe something else and create a simple little game in the 15 minutes I have to do a YouTube video. Uh, so this is just for fun to show you how you can speedily just make something stupid to waste your time. We're not going to be really doing, you know... Uh, uh, very advanced games. It's just a very simple little something to kill your time. And uh, I'm already uh, almost a minute into my tutorial here. So let's get going. I'm going to be using a Blender Beta uh, 2.5, 2.56 to be exact. Here's our default scene. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly uh, press uh, Control Alt Q to go into quad view. And I'm going to do things here quick because I don't have time to explain everything, but it's all stuff I've gone over in previous tutorials. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plane, probably about this big. Let me zoom in here and uh, grab that plane, move it down like so. So now I've got this plane. I'm going to move my camera view back here a little bit, like so. Maybe down a little bit so we can see pretty much the entire plane. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to now turn on the game engine. And we're going to go to Game Logic View here. I have the default cube picked there. That's going to be my player. And we'll give it a property. We'll call it player. And what we're going to do, this is going to be a game with one button. Going to add key, spacebar. And what's going to happen is a simple motion. Like so, we've got rotation, rotation X, Y, and Z. We're going to set the rotation to one degree. I might change that number here in the near future. Uh, another thing we're going to do is going to add an always. And what is the cube going to always be doing? It is going to be doing a motion of forward on the x-axis and we're going to say uh, negative one. In fact, I already thought I'm going to change this to a two degrees. So let's go to our camera view and see what this does. Oh, that's not a camera view, but as you can see, the cube circles around and goes forward. And then if I hit spacebar, while I'm hitting space, it starts to go the other direction. Now, we want it to fall off the plane, which it's not doing right now. So let's add some physics to it. We'll say that it is, uh, we'll make it dynamic. And we'll say collision box. We'll press P here. So you can see it can easily fall off there. Uh, let's make this uh, ground plane a little bit bigger. Uh, the size of the plane, the smaller it is, is going to make the game harder. And you'll see exactly the point of the game here in a little bit. So. Obviously, I can hold down spacebar and try to avoid falling off the edges. That's not too fun, not really much of a goal. So let's do this. Let's add a sphere. I'll add it right here. We'll add a UV sphere. Make sure that it's above the plane there. Okay, and we're going to give that sphere some physics. Uh, well, first we'll give it a property. We'll call it ball. And we'll give it, we'll say that it's rigid. We'll give it a collision bounds of a sphere. So now, whoops, let's go textured mode, camera view, P. And my goal will be to not fall off the edge, but to push the ball off the edge without falling off myself. There we go, I did that. So now that we got that going, Let's go on the top view here. We'll add another plane. I'm going to scale it up like so. Center it a little bit better. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to grab it and drag it down like so. Now that we've got that going, we can add some sensors for it. We can say uh, that let's give it a property of We'll just say score, how about that? We'll make that an integer and we'll set it to one. 
Now we're going to say on collision with something of a property of ball, which our ball has that property. If we click on it, you can see right there. So when it collides with a ball, what are we going to do? We are going to take the property of score and we'll say that it equals score minus one. Connect that there. Doing good on time. And we're also going to say that the ball, if it has a collision with something of a property of score, what's going to happen? We're going to edit the object. Instead of add, we're going to end an object. And uh, that will end the sphere object. So now, let's quickly click on the bottom plane here, the below group plane there. We're going to click this eye here, and just for troubleshooting, we're going to say uh, show debug properties. Now if I hit P, let's go into this view here, P. I'm going to try once again to knock that ball off without falling off myself which I did fall off, but what we really need to test now is boom, okay. So that ball hit, the ball died, and the score for plane went to zero. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to say for our player, our cube here, we can minimize all this. We'll say that if it has a collision with something with the property of score, We are going to uh, take the game, and uh, if I remember correctly, I want to restart this game. So, now, if our player falls off, okay, kind of exited out of the game, that's right, I'm trying to remember, um, quit this game, save the game, load the game. Uh, scene, I think. Yes, I want to restart this scene. So let's fall off the edge here. Okay, and it will start the game over. Okay, so we're doing great so far. We're almost done with our game, and we're only eight minutes into the tutorial. Now I can. Now that we've got everything set, I can Shift D and clone this sphere a number of times. Now let's count how many times we have the sphere. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. You can give it any number you want, but now we want to change the score plane to ten. And what we're going to do is we're going to add another property. Well, let's just press P and see how this works. Now you can also change the mass of the spheres and the player which will affect how hard you push the spheres. But the whole point of the game is to knock the spheres off without falling off yourself. And you see when you do fall off when you hit that bottom plane, I'll fall off right here, it will restart the game and put all the spheres back where they were. So now, our game is pretty much done, but what we want to set is when the score gets down to zero, so all the balls have been knocked off, we want to let the player know that they won. So real quick here, uh, I'm going to hit uh, spacebar and type in text. We'll add text. I'm going to type in you win. Okay. Going to a side view for that. I'm going to pick it up here so I can see it. I'm going to go to font. Once again, this is all stuff I've gone over and I'm just going through this fast because limited on time now. Fonts are basically paths, and paths are not visible in game mode, so we have to convert that font to um, a, a, a mesh object. So with the font selected, we're going to say object convert uh, to mesh. So now it is a mesh. Let me go to camera view here real quick. Okay, I'll go to top view. I'm going to hit with the text selected, R, X, and then type 90. That rotates at 90 degrees. Now I'm just going to rotate it 
and kind of put it up here. I'm going to try to get it in front of the camera right there. And we're going to say, basically, uh, we're going to add a sensor to it. We're going to say, uh, we're going to give it a property. I think there's a better way to do this, but we're going to say, I'll just say Vi for visible. We'll say integer, it's set to zero. We're going to say property Vi equals zero. So while it equals zero, we are going to change the visibility. Actually, let me take that back. I don't need to do that. Cancel all that. I just remember there is a better way to do this. I think if I have that selected, I can go to physics and in here, ha, ah, I click invisible. So when I start the game, the text is invisible. Now to make it visible, what we're going to do is choose the plane. And as you can see, we have it subtracting the score each time a ball hits it. So we're going to say now property when score equals zero. Now we're going to hit add here and we're going to shift select the text. So here's our text here. I'm going to click add and we're going to say visibility and we're going to say visible. So now when our score equals zero or all 10 balls have been pushed off, that font, that text should become visible. I'm running low on time here. So let's tr give this a try. Start off the game. It's uh, I messed up already. Ooh, falling off. Ooh. <laughs> oh no. Let's push those off. We got two more balls. And you can see how hard it is for the box to push those here. So boom, you win. Kind of hard to read. That's because of where the lighting is. But that's really simply a game in minutes done from beginning to end. Obviously, if you had more time, you could add sounds, textures, colors, maybe some more animation, make the you win spin so that it's not just stationary. Obviously, work on the lighting and maybe even make the camera move with the cube. You have a lot of options there, but showing that you can create a game from beginning to end in under 15 minutes using Blender 3D, and really, we didn't write any code. Um, I will save this and I will upload it to my website and there'll be a link in the description where you can download this blend file and play with it. Uh, I'm using Blender once again, 2.56 uh, beta here. Have fun with it. Uh, I'd love to see if you guys want to make a game similar to this, but modify it. Uh, go to the forums and upload them and or just uh, post them online and share a link in your comments or send me a link somehow. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. But once again, this is Game in Minutes with Blender 3D on Linux from filmsbychris.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.